Deb, are you ready? Are you ready for KCC? Yes. <laughs> Would you like to join in? Tell me, Deb, what's the weather like in Bilston? This is a pretty rubbish <laughs> here. I'm a black country born and bred, very proud of my heritage, but I haven't read one to the bills. We've never crossed the divide. I've heard this very tragic here. Well, you need to invite us. You need to invite us. I didn't know how to get there. <laughs> We just bless Dave this morning. We thank you, Lord, for his heart for you. We thank you for the word that you stored in his heart. And we pray now that, Lord, he will release that word and that, Lord, that word would go forth and would accomplish that that you purpose it to. That it would receive a good home, Lord, in our hearts. That, Lord, it would be food for our spirits, Lord. That, Lord, it would be a rain word from you today. Amen. 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 Okay, thanks ever so much. Well, bless the Lord. Amen. 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 There you go. Well, the Lord bless you. It's good to be back with you again. And um, by my, by the way, is my uh, brother and his wife. Uh, so, would you give them a case? Smoking and the drinking, 
and the fighting and the bad behaviour, the devil lost that when I got saved. But glory be to Jesus. We've lost their service. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots along with all the other chariots of Egypt, his officers all over them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen, troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the Sea of Pi and Hinoth. Opposite Baal Zephon. Please forgive me if I don't get these names right. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. And they were terrified, and they cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there was no graves in Egypt that he brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians rather than to die in the desert. Church, listen, you are never better off in Egypt. You are never better off in the past. Yeah. If God has got a future for you, you are always better in the future, not the past. Yeah. Amen. So you are never better off in Egypt. That was a wrong thing to say. Moses answered the people, don't be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you today. And the Egyptians you see today, you'll never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. And then the angel of God who had been travelling in front of uh, Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night the cloud of darkness to the one side and light to the other, so that neither went near each other all night long. And then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turning into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall, on the wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of the chariots come off so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, this is what the enemy said to church, listen up, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against the Egypt. Church, God is fighting for you. Yes. You know, God, God is a lover, but God is a fighter. Yes. Amen. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing towards it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on the right and the left. And that day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and they put their trust in Him and in Moses, His servant. Yeah. That's what I want to finish on. Yeah. You can put your trust in God but they put their trust also in Moses. And I want to highlight something towards the end of this message. So this morning is um, uh, destruction, desire, dimension. All three of those are found in this passage. Uh, you'll know the enemy. You know what I'm talking about when I mention the enemy. The devil, the one who gives you all the hard times and the difficulties. Um, you know, destruction is on his agenda. The devil is real. The devil is real. I think sometimes 
people have got a pocket-sized God and a king-sized devil. He is real, he is powerful, but he's not all-powerful. Amen? The Bible tells us concerning destruction that the thief comes to kill, comes to steal, and he comes to destroy as well. And we've seen the effects. I don't know about you, but I've seen the devil's handiwork. I've seen exactly what he's done. You know, he desires to take you out. Did you know that? He nearly took me out. I haven't got time to share that, but dear me, was I close to being taken out. He wants to take your children out too. If, 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 if the devil can wipe out that next generation, he's achieved a good thing. He wants to wipe you out, and he's keen on taking your children out too. That's why as parents, we've got to keep on praying for our children. Amen? We can't leave them to their devices in their bedrooms all alone. We've got to keep praying and uplifting our children because they are up against some real enemies these days. You know, Jesus said to Peter, Satan has desired. Satan has desired to sift you just like wheat. But I've prayed for you. I love that, you know. Did you know, it, Jesus didn't just pray for Peter. Jesus is praying for you. As a believer, Jesus is praying for you. The Bible tells me where he's positioned this morning. He's at the right hand of the Father. And he's praying. He's actually interceding for us. That's good to know, I think. I love the fact that Jesus hasn't just left us. He's cleared off and he's going to come back one day, which we believe anyway. But he's not interceding now. He's interceding for all of us in whatever situations we're going to. Now this passage, by the way, uh, is one of the most famous in the Old Testament. Uh, God has freed his people, as you know, out of Egypt. Slavery in Egypt is no more. Those taskmasters that were whipping them and beating them are no more. The hard labour is no more. And we find God's people taking their first steps. Our freedom and a new direction. Isn't this a great picture of our salvation? That once we were lost, but now we have been found. Once we were blind, now we can see. Once we were living that way, but now we are living this way. You have to come out of something to go into something else. And thank God this morning, friends, for our salvation. As we've done that around this lovely table of the Lord. I've enjoyed hearing some of your voices this morning giving thanks. Because I'm just used to the voices down there at Bilson. And you can get familiar. So when you pray communion in another church, it's nice to hear the voices giving God thanks. But that is our situation this morning. Once we were, now we are. Amen. Can you say it this morning? Thank God for his salvation. And we find God's people uh, following a cloud by day and a fire by night. Dear me, I wish I had some of that in these present days. I, you know, when it comes to the will of God and serving God and knowing God's dimension, I wish I could just follow the cloud. This is the way walking in type thing. But it's a bit more difficult these days, isn't it? But uh, now we have God directing them uh, towards the sea. Is this water okay to drink, by the way? <laughs> I hope it tastes better than the Bilster's water. <laughs> and I think you've got a dead dog in the tank. <laughs> to Pharaoh, to Pharaoh, it looks like they are wandering painlessly. I believe the Holy Spirit stopped me at this point of. Um, studying his word because I just want to say to someone in church this morning, I don't know who you are come and see me after you feel that you are wandering aimlessly come and have a chat with me, I'll pray with you you feel like you were just you're doing this for God you're doing that for God you, you're wandering aimlessly you think you are but I want to say to whoever that person is in church this morning, you are not wandering aimlessly. You are in the plan. You are in the purpose of God. And you need to know that because you just think you're going around in circles and it's not happening for me. Listen, I was chatting to a woman at our church recently and she came in to see me. She said, Dad, I've been following the Lord for so many years. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I'm doing all of this stuff. I'm at the front of church. I'm you know, this, that, and the other. She says, I'm just not getting anywhere in God. 
And I had to sit down with that lady from a good half hour and speak some stuff into her life because often we feel like we're just walking around in circles. We're not getting anywhere in God. We're not seeing the results that we want to. Do you know the advice I give to people like that is you just keep serving Jesus. Yeah. You make sure you are bound in the center of his will and that will come into fruition. That will take place. Stop pushing God for the answers. Stop, stop trying to get stuff out of God that he's not going to give you. Just, just keep doing what you're doing. You are not wandering around aimlessly. I don't know what that's for, but come and drag me in the end, okay? Yeah? <laughs> if it's for no one, that's fair play. I just, you know, felt that that was for someone here at uh, church. You know, these people left pretty quick out of Egypt. They got out of there kind of overnight. They, they, it, it, it was a quick thing. Just, just pack your bags, grab your stuff, and get out of Egypt. And they were, they were heading actually in a southerly dimension. A southerly dimension. And after a while, they start heading north towards the sea. Sometimes it seems like, God, what are you up to? Any, anybody ever been there? I'm heading in this direction, Lord. And they send me in that direction. Uh, have, you got the, uh, have you got the geography correct, Lord? <laughs> well, God knew exactly what he was doing. And Pharaoh pursues them, and he goes after them, and the end result is threefold. Number one, destruction. Write that down, or, or remember this. Verse 25. Look at verse 25 again, if you would. It says, He made the wheels of their chariots come off, so that they had difficulty driving. He made their wheels come off. You know, some enemies, and I've seen this over the years, some enemies' wills have come hurtling off and they've been able to go no further. And I'm sure there's people in church this morning. You've seen the enemy pursuing you. You've seen what his tactics were. You, he's come up against you. And I've seen, literally seen, the wheels come off what the enemy has wanted to do yeah. in my own life. It says not one of them remained. You know, the Bible has shown me on plenty of occasions, you know, of people who put up a fight against God and his people. People like Haman in the book of Esther. I could give you a whole load of people out of the Bible that came up against God and came up against God's people. Haman was one of them. He actually builds these gallows, um, like, to hang them on. He just wanted to see the Jews wiped out altogether. He wasn't getting on with morning Canaan. Uh, and he didn't realise what Esther's position was at the time, but uh, it all became clear. And the very person that built the gallows hung on them. Enemy, watch out. What you are doing to God, what you are doing to God's people, you'll end up hanging on. I have seen this countless times. Don't, don't fear the enemy, church. Don't, he is a roaring lion, or like a roaring lion. He does make a lot of noise. He's not a pussycat. I've heard preachers say, oh, the devil's only a pussycat. No, he had. He was a roaring lion in my life and he nearly took me out. Yeah. Stop putting him down as if he's some pussycat. Now, I don't give the devil praise and build him up. But like I said before, he is powerful. He'll take you out. He's like that roaring lion just wants to take you out. He wants to sift you as wheat as it were. But you know, Haman's there and he ends up on them gallows that he, that he built for them. Even out there in the world, people are opposing God right now. Last week I did a Bible study in our church on, on the persecuted church, or two weeks back, on the persecuted church. 360 million people can tell you what persecution is all about. And it's on the increase, church. It's on the increase. That's why we have to keep on standing firm. That's why we have to pray for the persecuted church. Does this church pray? for the persecuted church, for believers all across the world that just haven't got what we've got. We are so privileged this morning that we can do this and right. we take okay. it for granted. Pray for the persecuted church. Always being persecuted, always being put down. There's so many people now that are anti-God and there's no shame in it either. People are standing up against God and, and giving God, man, if I was God, I'd wipe them out. <laughs> God is gracious. Do you know what John Lennon said? You'll know John Lennon. He, he sang in the Beatles. My brother loved the Beatles. I didn't admit to like the Beatles because I was a punk rocker. You don't listen to Beatles. But 
when he was out at work, I used to play his album. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Beatles, but don't tell anyone. Uh, John Lennon said this, and he did say this in 1966. This is what John Lennon said. Christianity will go. It will vanish. He said, I might, and I'll be proved right, the Beatles are more popular than Jesus right now. I don't know which will go first, rock and roll or Christianity. Fourteen years later, John Lennon got shot six times. Got shot dead. But Jesus is still building Amen. his church in 2023. Yeah. Do you know, recently in our news, we've heard a lot about the, uh, the Titanic. And um, very sad story. We were praying for the, the three three or four people that were down there sadly lost their lives. But concerning the Titanic, you know, someone reportedly said this, not even God himself could sink the Titanic. Now I'm not saying that God sunk the Titanic. Um, there were some lovely testimonies actually to come out of the Titanic when he was sinking. There were some lovely testimonies. But I think we need to be really careful when it comes to what we say concerning yeah. God's not capable as well. Are you sure? God, God can't do this. Don't limit God, church. You know, the Bible tells me that God is in heaven. He does exactly what he pleases. God can do whatever across this world. You know, the earth is the Lord's. And everything is. The fullness thereof. It's his, by the way. It's not the enemy. The enemy's having a field day here. But the earth belongs to the Lord, and God can do it. So be careful when you say things concerning God. Even words and actions towards God. Psalm 34 verse 16 says, The face of the Lord is against evildoers. We've got to realise this. I think a lot of the time we, you know, all the grace of God and the love of God, and you know, it's all lovely, it's all flowers, and it's God's a just God. Yeah. You've got to remember this. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see. You will see no more. Do you know, I was working at a place in Wolverhampton and I was driving a wagon on every goods wagon. Um, class one, by the way. Heavy goods, you know, these big artists. Yeah, that, that is me driving up down the motorways as well. But I was working for this firm, and every time I got back, there was two idiots, and they were there was idiots. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how people listen to music in the background? Not that bad. In the yard, it was full on. You know this? I don't know what they even call it these days. It's screaming and yelling to loud guitar, like it's heavy metal kind of man, you know. It, it, it was satanic because some of the words in the in the screaming and yelling and everything. And they would put signs of crosses, they were just graffiti in signs of crosses upside down, satanic messages and all these things. Then, then there was, I don't want to be crude ladies, but there were women's bodies. Parts just plastered all over the ground. It just, oh, I hated it. I just hated it. The presence of, here's me, the presence of God in this vehicle, this cab. Jesus is with me. And every time I get back, that night. But you know, one day, as I was reading my Bible, the Egyptians you see now, you will see no more. I began to get hold of that verse. And I began to pray for those two guys. And do you know what happened? One day it was very, very windy in Wolverhampton. And they was there yelling and shouting. And every time I got back, they were giving me all this God stuff and shouting and bawling about Jesus. I said, Lord, I can't stand your name being... I, I, see, when you love God, you, you love Him. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Yeah. And anybody that says anything about Jesus... 
I can't stand it. That's why I can't stand people in church who keep saying, oh my God. Stop saying, oh my God. Have reverence for the name. Have reverence for the name. We've got a lot of cultures in our church and within certain cultures, everybody, they, they seem to be, don't say that. You never hear say, people say, oh my Buddha or oh my Muhammad, do you? Why do they say, oh my God, his name, his, his, his name is above every name. Stop yeah. saying it. Stop saying If you're saying it, pack it in. I can say that to you because I'll get out of church and I'll go. But <laughs> I'm sure would say the same. But they were, they were discrediting God and his name. And I said, oh, sort them out. Sort them out, God. Stop that. I hate it. And on that wind you go. <coughs> a big piece of 72, about 7 inches by 2. The wind blew it. It was about 10 foot high. And at the same time, it just come hurtling down and went smack on that chap's head. And I thought, praise the Lord! <laughs> I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have, but I did. Do you know what? Within a week of praying against that satanic stuff, both of them had the sack. And another two lads came in that were lovely guys. You can pray against enemy activity. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You can pray against the enemy. The Egyptians you see today, you'll see no more. Those two idiots I see today, I will see no more. And that actually came to pass. Do you know, this was actually a real, um, it was a turning point for, for God's people. Yeah, there was battles ahead, there was difficulties going forward, but for now, Pharaoh and the Egyptians... You won't be seeing that here. And I want to say to you, church, this morning, don't revisit old battles. Yeah. Don't revisit old battles. If it's happened and the sea has covered them up, don't go snorkeling. Don't go, you know, getting under the... Don't go picking up old battles. Do you? Amen? Amen? God dealt with it. God did it. God got the victory. Move on. Amen? Amen. Second thing is desire. Verse 18, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Do you know, even though we've seen, first of all, there the destruction of those who went after God's people, not everybody did. Not everybody went after God's people in Egypt. There were some that were left behind. I think a lot we, we, we give Egypt a bad press. We reckon it was all of Egypt that went after them. Not everybody in Egypt did. There were still those that were left behind. And the Bible tells us clearly there that God would get the glory in Egypt. It says this, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. You know, this place, this nation was full of idols uh, and all else. But they saw who the real God was. They saw first and knew God was. Jehovah, Jehovah Mache, the God who smiles. You know, recently I've been doing some Bible studies in our own church on the names of God. I've never tackled the names of God. And we all love, we all love Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. We all love Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who is my healer. We'll keep boasting about those names of God. But you know, Jehovah Mache means the God who smiles. Sometimes God has to take people out. He will do that. Did you know, church, sometimes he'll take you out. Now, you're not too keen on that, are you? You just want all your enemies like them two idiots taking out. But sometimes God will have to put you into a quarantine situation. Sometimes he, has to, he, he just has to pull you out of the way. Because we get in the way, don't we? Do you know what God did with his own people, his own precious people, the one that he is jealous for. Do you know what God did? He put them into Babylon. He put them into captivity for 70 years. The God who smites. The God who, 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 who because he loves you. Church, he has to discipline us because he loves us, the Bible says. The Lord loves those. Sorry, the Lord disciplines those who he loves. God loves you with an everlasting love, church, this morning. And sometimes he has to put you through. Quarantine, just so that he gets the glory. 
His desire, church, is always to have you close to Him. You know, God is a jealous God in the right sense of the word. He, 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 just, he just loves you so much. He doesn't want to share you with another. That's why I have problems with people mixing it. Church people, mixing it with the world. Some of the stuff I see on Facebook, mixing it with the world. And then coming in and great taking communion on a Sunday morning, but mixing it with the world on a Saturday night. Church, come on, get a grip. Do you know, I was living that type of life and I was so miserable. I was, in, I was an okie koki In, out, in, out, shaking all the I don't know the rest of the song, but that was me. And it was not pleasing to God, and it certainly wasn't pleasing to me either. God's desire is to have you in His camp, in His territory, in His kingdom. Instead of keep mixing it up. For God so loved, the world, God's desire, He just loves people. Yeah. He loved Egypt back then. And by the way, He still loves Egypt now. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. You know, as a church, I don't know if you pray for the nations. We at Excel will often pray for the nations. I will bring the nation to the church. Iran, Iraq, Nigeria, Afghanistan, Egypt. We see, you know, we prayed for Egypt about three or four years ago. God has been doing some wonderful things in Egypt. Man, the churches are coming together. <coughs> the different uh, leaders of the churches, they've started coming together. Let me tell you, God is doing something in Egypt right yeah. now. Yes. You can't write Egypt off just because of this one story. God still loves them. A good number of Christians participating, uh, working with each other, serving with each other in Egypt, even today. I don't care how bad some nations are becoming or have become. Dear me, Ron, what's the UK coming to? Church, come on, we've got to pray for this nation. What, what on earth is going on? I never thought my eyes would see what I'm seeing. I ain't got time to go into all this stuff. But I want to tell you, pray for your church leaders. Pray for all of you in church life because I'll tell you what, some of the stuff that is already coming up against us in church life and coming against us now, dear me, the devil's having a field day. Yeah. When you allow all the different gods and everything into your, 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 your household or your nation, watch out. Yeah. Watch out. We're mixing it like this big bag of licorice all sorts that always lead to God. No, they don't. No, they don't. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to heaven except through me. Some of our famous stars are saying, well, I've got a bit of Jesus, I've got a bit of that in, I've got a bit of uh, that religion in, I've got a bit of that. One of them's going to work for me, so I'm going to heaven. What an absolute lot of waffle. <laughs> There's only one name under heaven, says the book of Acts, by which we can be saved. It's the name of Jesus, or nothing. There's no other name under heaven. And praise God, God's desire is for all men to be saved. All women to be saved. All boys and girls. Isn't it lovely to see that young the kids this morning? Well, I love that. Pray for them. Pray for them. Dear me, you thought you had some battles back in the 70s. 60s by the look of people, 40s. <laughs> <laughs> Terrified, the Bible says in verse 10, 
they were terrified and they cried out to the Lord. That's a good thing. When we're in those similar situations, we're up against it. But they did the right thing. They cried unto the Lord. There's nothing wrong, church, with crying to the Lord. I haven't got time to tell you some of the stuff that I've been through over the past years. But all I could do was cry to the Lord. I sat in a cab. I had to pull over because my tears were so many. I had to pull into a lay-by in Shrewsbury and I couldn't go any further because the heavy weight of what was happening in my life at that time, I just couldn't take it anymore. I had never ever thought of committing suicide. That was never an option. But it needed to come that close. It come that close, I'll tell you. Because of the heaviness of what was going on. And friends, church, listen, when that heaviness is coming in your direction, all you can do, they did the right thing. Yeah. All you can do is cry to the Lord. Amen. You know what the Bible tells me? His ears are attentive. God's always on the listen. He's, his eyes are roaming all over the earth. He's always looking for people. But I want to tell you, as well as God's eyes being open, his ears are open too. Amen. And he hears the prayer of those that are in distress. He hears your prayers this morning. Whatever you are crying for, ladies, and I don't know why I'm saying ladies, perhaps the men have got it all together, but they normally think they have. But I don't know if there's any ladies in church this morning, you are just, people don't know about your situation, they don't know what you're going to. Keep on crying to the Lord, it's a good thing. Cry out to the Lord. We've got no one else to turn to. Peter says, who else can I turn to? You've got the words of eternal life. But you know who to turn to this morning. Keep on crying out to the Lord. Do you know, when I was crying out to the Lord, I read a verse that I had to keep saying. And I went to work on a morning in pain, in agony, and, and, and all of this that was kicking off in my life, and all the loss. There was a, there was a tremendous amount of loss that was going on. In mine and Heather's situation and the family and everything, it was horrendous. I never want to go back to that. I've never known financial hardship like that. But I want to tell you something. Psalm 46, verse 1 says, God is an ever present help in times. Times of what? Church, listen, all of us are going to go through times of trouble. Now you can walk up, get out of church, stand up and walk out of church this morning and no, 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 I've never gone through. You will go through trouble. In fact, Jesus said that you will go through. In this world, you will have yeah, trouble. I don't know, by the way, I don't know any Christian that hasn't gone through times of trouble. I don't know anybody. We all go through. But you know, when we go through trouble, and there's no way of escape. It's the Egyptian army or it's the sea. When we cry out to God, you need to know something. And it's found there in Scripture. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He's an ever-present help in times of trouble. And I have to keep quoting that verse every day when I got up out of bed and I started walking up to someone, something that I was just a complete waste of time and waste of effort and everything. I have to say, Psalm 46, verse 1, Lord, I am praying this. You are my strength. You are an ever-present help in times of trouble. You are my strength. You are my support. I am trusting you wholeheartedly. I don't know how this is going to end up, but I'm still trusting you. And church, we've got to keep on speaking it. It's okay getting other people to come and pray for you and pray in a lovely, nice prayer, but you speak it. There's life and death from in the power of the tongue. Amen. You keep speaking it out. And you know what God was? He was a help. He was a support. He was a strength. Some days I felt like He Man. <laughs> when I was as weak as anything. I was as weak as anything. But his perfect strength, his strength was, what's that verse, made perfect in life's weakness. God is our refuge and strength, and ever present out in time.
signs of trouble. So what they did was the right thing. But I want to say this now, it's concerning leaders of this church. Their words to Moses were totally different. Get hold of this this morning, church, because this is a challenge to all of us. You can cry out to God. But they were crying at Moses and saying, look at verse 11 and 12. They said to Moses, was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Did we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? See, what you say to God is totally different to what you say to church leaders. True? Do you think Moses planned all this, by the way? One week, one week out of Egypt, and they're blaming the leader, they're blaming the pastor. But this was God's direction, wasn't it? What's up with that speed? I should keep down and get another one. It's under warranty, get another one. You know, God's direction for his church isn't the easiest. The Bible says God was with Moses. And God is with these leaders too. Church, listen up. God is with God and his wife. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's hear a few more. Amen. God is with God and his wife. They are called to lead the church. God is with them. Stop mouthing off. Stop. Stop giving them a hard time. Oh yeah, you trust God. You'll come to the prayer meeting, you'll pray all your nice prayers, but stop mouthing off at your leaders. Stop giving your leaders a bad name, as it were. If God wants to take KCC in a particular dimension, what I've learnt is he'll tell them Amen? Yes, yes. Amen. Do you know we had a crackpot of a lady <laughs> who hadn't been to church for three years. Three years. She turned up at our place, XL Church, with this six page manifesto of the direction the church has got to go in. So I said, Sister, go and get yourself a cup of tea. I'll have a look through it. I only read the second line. And the bin was there. I, I couldn't put it in the bin. I had to hand it back to it. How dare people come and tell the leadership what to, when you don't even attend the church, for goodness sake. Here's one for real, and you're going to laugh at this, but it was absolutely real. A lady came to our church. And she, had, she hadn't been for about a year, a year and a half. And she says, God's given me a word. The direction of XL Church is going in this direction. <gasps> wow, I was, I was excited. What is it? And she says, what you've got to do is you've got to get the whole church, the congregation, to go outside and you've all got to dance like Red Indians. <laughs> no, I don't even serious. This is serious, church. These, these are the crackpots that are coming into our churches, into our buildings, and demanding that we do things their way. And this lady said, so I don't even know how I'm an Indian dancer. Does anybody want to show me? No, no, no. I don't know. I've seen films and. and they're absolute crazy. The Holy Spirit's going to move as soon as you get the call. I have heard so much stuff. This is serious. I'm not telling lies. She even wrote it down. She left it in my office. So I got it. I put it in Dan's office next door. I ain't taking no notice of that. That ain't happening on my ship. But sometimes, Rob, it's a bit more subtle. It ain't so outlandish. It's not so weird. Really subtle where voices from within the congregation. Oh yeah, they love the Lord. They're, wow. 
power, God's great. But then they give the leaders a hard time. This is what these people did. They just, they, it wasn't happening with Moses. It eventually did. But there was times when he did. Church, how many of you pray for your pastor, by the way? Don't see that wrong? <laughs> I'll take any prayer from anyone within the congregation. Pray for your pastors. Uplift him on a daily basis. You've got your big list of stuff. You want you want your town mending. You want your food bill paid. You want your kids done. Would you add your pastor to that list? I've got people back at Excel that pray for me and Heather. You can't beat it. Uplift them. The Bible tells you to. Do you know I went to Tech Excel Church through some specific directions over the years and it wasn't easy. There might come a time when Mark may just upset the car a little. Not full of new feathers. Man, when we had our building project, dear me, did that stir up the whole new sense. But look what God has done for us. God gave me one word, extension. We've extended the car park, we've extended the building, we've got a, a, a new building on the back of you. God gave me one word. It was either extension or dance around like an idiot. Like a <laughs> Massive. 
And it's going to take a collective effort of God's people to get you through some of the stuff. It's already coming. It's already coming to this nation. We speak of persecution. Man, if you've got a battle on your hands, if I've got a battle on my hands, we're already dealing with stuff right now that is a real battle on our hands. But we can't keep saying, oh, in that case, let's just go back to the 70s again. How we used to do things. We cannot go back to the past. Look what the leader said. The leader. This isn't what God said. The leader said to them, stand still and you will see the deliverance. The songs that you got right at the beginning. You will see the deliverance of the Lord. The word slave was mentioned in one of the songs. And this is what Romans 6.18 said. You can go back to being a slave to sin. Or you can go forward and be a slave from righteousness. A slave for obedience. Isn't that a great picture of the gospel? death to life. No turning back, but heading forward. Um, oh, I have got something else to say. Let's just, let's just pray. <coughs> My time is gone. I don't want to hold this. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you that we have been delivered. We were delivered into this world. You saw our unformed body. You created us. You knitted us together within our mother's womb. Fearfully and wonderfully made. You delivered us into this earth, Lord. I thank you for everyone here, Lord, that has experienced life, even with all its hardships and difficulties, Lord. We're here this morning, Lord. Lord. We thank you for your deliverance concerning salvation. You brought us out of darkness into the kingdom of your marvelous light. And I want to thank you, Father, for your... Lord, you have destroyed enemies that we've come up against. We've experienced destruction. We've seen the enemy go flee. And I pray for every person in this church this morning that is undergoing a, 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 an enemy attack on the... What the devil meant for good, what the enemy meant for good, for harm, sorry, you meant for good. And I pray that whatever the enemy is thrown at anyone within this church this morning, you would turn it into good. Amen. And we would experience the destruction of the enemy in whatever chaos that proves to be. Father, we thank you for your desire. Your desire is to see the lost one for you. Thank you that there are a good number of Christians in this building this morning. Please give them the heart and the desire to see the loss saved. You still don't want to see any perish, Lord. You want all people to come unto repentance. I pray for anyone this morning that is seeking direction. Is it this way? Is it that way? Lord, what should I do? Just help them to stay bang in the centre of your will. And Lord, please point them in the direction that you want them to go. Lord, bless KCC. I pray for Rob. I pray for his wife and Tim here. Lord, I pray that you would bless this church. Lord, yes, we'll say together, the best days are ahead and not behind. Even though new battles will come, new offences will come, new armour will come up against them, Lord, but we're standing in your armour. Help this church to stay strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. God bless this church in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord bless you. Our vision is to be a worshipping community at the heart of Kings Winford. Where every home is an expression of the kingdom. And every believer a disciple of the King. Our mission is to be obedient to the Great Commission. Through the faithful proclamation of the Gospel. And developing, equipping and sending of disciples.
Welcome to King's Winford Christian Center.